Hello everyone, we are at chapter 8, part 2. In this part, we'll learn about average product and marginal product. So let's talk about short run production. In the short run, as we said, capital is the fixed input. Only changes in the variable labor, variable input labor can change the level of output. So short run production function looks like this. I remember I mentioned this in the previous part, quantity, total quantity produced is equal to is a function of labor and capital however because capital is fixed we are just going to assume that short-run production only depends on labor with the fixed capital okay so here is a short-run production schedule or function so basically it's a literal function but when we put in different combinations of labor and capital you get this table so example right if you hire zero capital, regardless of the number of labor you have, you're going to produce zero. If you have zero labor, regardless of how many capital you have, you're going to have zero quantity. Okay, so I'm going to just take a look at this column. If you have one unit of capital, right, you have one worker, you produce 25. You have two workers, total production is 55 three workers 83 so on and so forth okay so you see different combinations of labor and capital producing different levels of output so average product if labor of labor is def ap is defined as total quantity produced divided by number of workers employed marginal product of labor is the change in quantity divided by change in the number of workers when average product is rising, marginal product is greater than average product. So you can think of this as your, so marginal product is your marginal uh, production, right? So let's say this is your semester the GPA. If your semester the GPA is 4.0, okay, this is great because this is going to pull your average up. Average product is like cumulative your cumulative GPA okay so we know that if marginal uh, margin product semester GPA exceeds your cumulative let's say your cumulative is 3.2 in this case your average is going to go up because the latest semester you did much better than your average when average product is falling that means your marginal product is less than your average product in other words, if your cumulative GPA is falling, your semester the GPA marginal is less than your average. Okay, so let's say semesterly you got 3, which is less than your cumulative 3.2. As a result, your cumulative will be less than 3.2. When average product reaches, reaches as its maximum, average and marginal product will be equal to each other. Okay, so let's learn about law of diminishing marginal product. Uh, so when we say marginal product, we are focusing on marginal product of labor, okay? As usage of a variable input, such as labor, you are hiring more and more people, workers, a point is reached beyond which its marginal product decreases. So after a while, your marginal product of labor will go down, okay? So the best way to learn about this is to go over this table, okay? So you have total average and marginal products of labor so as you can see we have 0 1 through 10 workers producing for instance one worker produces 52 units two workers together produce 112 three workers together produce 170 four workers produce 220 so it's your job now to fill out this table but before you get started, I want to show you a couple of examples. Then I will recommend you pause this slide and literally calculate all these levels. So for the first unit, you can divide zero by zero. It's a, we put a dash, dash. Okay, let's calculate average product. It says quantity divided by, right, labor. So 52 over 52, if 52 over 1 is going to be 52. Marginal product is change in quantity divided by change in labor. So change in quantity is going to be Q 
right change in quantity is q2 minus q1 so what's q1 previous level this is q1 i'm going to actually label once only q2 so margin product will be 52 minus 0 right in parentheses divided by change in labor 0 to 1 1 minus 0 okay so this is going to be 52 as well i'm going to calculate the second one next 112 divided by 2 quantity divided by number of workers 56 right and let's calculate marginal product here it's going to be change in quantity q1 q2 and change in labor so 112 minus 52 52 divided by 2 minus 1 so this is going to be 60 so i'm going to stop at this point what you can do is you can actually calculate all these average product for three units of labor at quantity 170 so complete this table stop this video right now please and go ahead and complete this table well welcome back you should be done with this table and your table will look like this if you have completed your table right average product and marginal product what i'm going to do next is i'm actually going to go to excel okay you're giving these table you are given this table so what we're going to do we're going to learn how to calculate these in excel right so equal sign average product is quantity divided by labor and then we're going to go mark this cell go to this corner a plus sign will show up black plus sign double click boom it calculates till the end marginal product so we're going to write this formula numerator first change in quantity current quantity minus previous quantity close the parentheses divided by change in number of labor minus current labor minus initial labor close parentheses enter okay go select the cell then go to the corner it becomes a plus sign boom pull it all the way down so we learned how to replicate this table i would like to also draw this graph draw not the graph but graph it so you go to charts okay so in the charts area we're going to pick scatter okay so i'm going to pick uh this one for instance so what i'm going to do delete this but choose the entire chart area like this so we're going to actually choose labor against average and marginal product okay so we're going to do insert charts you're gonna go to scatter you're gonna go to this one okay so if you look at this we just drew we just drew marginal product and average product of labor so this orange one is my marginal product right it's an inverted u shape a uh, little bit more pronounced than average product is also inverted u shape but check this out right when marginal product is greater than average product average product is increasing blue line when marginal product is less than average product when the orange line curve is below the blue marginal average product then average product is decreasing so i'm going to go back to my slide right if you graph we get this graph total product and let's go actually graph total product here too so first choose output okay then scatter let's choose the base on labor okay scatter and this one this is your total output level or total product we are drawing it against the quantities of labor okay so the effect of changes in capital stock so we actually draw this average product and marginal product curves and calculated it based on two units of capital right 
what if we hire three units? What happens is that if you increase capital or the capital is at three units, your marginal and average product curves will shift up. Okay, so if quantity is given to you as such, you can calculate average marginal product and your average and marginal product curves both will shift up, right? And your total product curve shifts up to with three units of capital, right? So capital is fixed, yes, but we are learning how to calculate different uh, levels of output for different levels of capital, fixed levels of capital. Okay, I'll see you in part three.